Hi and welcome to tutorial 100 in this series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. It seems like um, the last 10 years have gone by pretty quickly and uh, it's unbelievable that this is now my 100th tutorial but uh, here it goes and uh, what we're going to be talking about is the new optimization API that has been introduced with TradeStation 9.5. And uh, TradeStation, you may have seen, have produced a very good video and also some very useful API documentation with an example program that you probably will want to look at and experiment with. But, uh, and also I think should be uh, worth mentioning, there's probably going to be a lot of uh, apps and things on the TradeStation forums using this new API. But having said that, um, oftentimes it might be useful for you to be able to create your own app that is specific to your needs. So what we're going to be doing in this particular tutorial is using the optimiz optimization API, which gives you a lot of advantages over the uh, the old-fashioned way of doing an optimization such as the ability to optimize a strategy over several sim symbols and in this particular case we're going to be doing it over just two symbols but we could add others also the ability to optimize a strategy over a number of different numbers of minute bars and then we're going to be optimizing two strategies i'm also going to be showing you how you do this if you wanted to try every uh, permutation of values but also using genetic options and we're going to be creating a form and uh, then in two separate videos I'm going to be covering something slightly different one is just the very simply adding uh, a text input where you could put a symbol name and uh, also uh, creating a progress bar so you could see how the uh, optimization is occurring. Okay, so what I'm going to do is is start this. Obviously, I already created an optimization there, but we're going to start from scratch just so you can see the steps that I would go through. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an optimizer. Now, if you're not seeing that in your toolbox, if you were to right click here and say choose items, then you can select any items that are not there that, uh, that you need. And in this particular case, we're going to be using the optimizer and the job. So those two need to be selected there. But uh, having done that, just go back to the toolbox and I'm just going to double click on the optimizer and double click on the job. And uh, you should see these appearing now at the bottom of the screen. What I'm going to do here is just change the name of that just to optimizer and going to change the name of this just to job and then we're going to be using the three events from the optimizer so if we just click here you can see the events then I'm just going to double click on each of these in turn and you'll see some code being added to our program so what I'm going to do is just remove some of the uh, some of the comments here just to try and keep this as slim streamlined as possible Okay, so that is the uh, the optimizer and the job. We're also going to be using a form. So what I'm going to do here is right click within the the program. I'm going to say add form, and uh, here we have a form. And now we can start designing that form. And as I mentioned before, we're going to be having a a text box. So it's going to double click that. Let's go back to the form. It's going to move that in the middle and we also need a start button and an end button so I'm just going to create a button just going to make sure just do that again I'm going to move that into the program double click on the button sorry about this just double click on the button and bring that down and then we're going to be using a progress bar which, uh, which I will add at the moment and then we'll be looking at in more detail in a later video. So let's just resize that for the moment and uh, probably want to just make sure these buttons are named accordingly. So if we just select one of them and just move on to the properties and then we can change the text. So we could put in here something like start optimization
and probably want to just resize that a little bit as well because it's so it will fit the text in and uh, let's move it there and then button 2 let's do something similar you'll notice the little helpful lines appearing there to tell me when it is the same size as the button above. I'm going to make this stop optimization. Obviously you could uh, you could make a button which does both stop and start and uh, believe that's one of the things that they do uh, in the uh, some of the trade station documentation about this but I just want to keep this uh, relatively simple at the moment. Okay so we've got uh, our program beginning to take shape. Now one of the things that we uh, we need to do is define the job because if we just click on here and uh, click on the properties you'll see that there really isn't uh, very much helpful there to go on so in this particular case what I would recommend is that you could start with this program or start with the the trade station example program to look at the job definition and uh, possibly just copy and paste those and then add additional options using the optimization API, uh, API documentation as a resource but what we're going to do is we're going to create a method which is going to be called define job and this is going to be returning a, a job now one of the things that you'll see if you watch the uh, the trade station video is they do not recommend bringing in the tsopt namespace just because of its size. So what we're going to do in each case we're just going to use TS, TS opt job like I've just done in this particular case and I'm going to call this define job like so and uh, just going to put in some variables and you'll see how we use these in a few moments as we as we go along. So in each case we're going to be using the TS opt and creating a variable job a security a strategy and then as I mentioned we're going to be doing this uh, with the all the options then we're going to be using genetic options so I'm just going to put in the genetic options for the moment okay so we can now begin the method so the first thing I'm going to do is create a job. So I'm going to say job equals new ts opt dot job. I've done similar things before in some of our other tutorials. And uh, what we're going to now do is add a security. So we're going to go security equals job dot course we can use this capability if we want to save some typing add security and as I mentioned we're going to be uh, doing this for a couple of uh, couple of securities so we're going to do that right now and I'm going to say opt symbol I'm just going to copy this just to save a little bit of typing job.securities dot opt symbol and then we need to add the two securities that we're going to be using in this particular case so opt symbol and then we're going to do exactly the same for a second symbol and you could add many more obviously the more you add the longer it's going to take to perform the optimization okay so there are the symbols now we want to add intervals so we're going to say security dot opt 
interval dot and then we're going to be using add minute chart and you'll see a lot of different options here and we're going to put in the minute value we're going to just do the uh, the five minute the ten minute again I'm just going to save myself a little typing so I'm going to do five minute and ten minute like so and then we need to tell the job what strategies we're going to be using so I'm going to say strategy add strategy then we need to give it the exact name of the strategy that we're going to be using and I'm just using a couple of standard trade station ones here MACD long entry and the uh, the Mac D short entry but having done that we're also going to be defining what the inputs are for this strategy so we're going to be uh, defining those here so we go strategy dot and we're going to tell it what the name of the input is in this case fast length and we're going to give it a range so we're going to say 5 to 11 in steps of 2 and then we're going to do something similar for the slow length so so we're going to say in this case 21 to 29 in steps of 2 and then just to save some typing I'm just going to copy this little section and then we're going to make this MACD short entry SE like so and then we can leave the, uh, the inputs as they are and then we're going to want to see some results from this program so we're going to be saying result options equals job dot settings result options and uh, just want to tell it how many to keep so I don't know exactly what happened there but let's just go back and delete delete that so result options equals job dot settings dot result options and then we're going to say result options dot set num test to keep and we're going to make that in this case 250 of course some of these values if you don't set them then they have a default value so return the job so this is what we're uh, defining here and I'm going to end the begin end statement so what I'm going to do is just verify this see if we've made any typing errors so far okay so it looks like we put in an extra period there which we we don't need looks like we put in a period there instead of a comma okay looks like we're pretty good so far but this program is really not going to do anything at the moment because we've uh, we've done a job definition but we haven't actually made that job definition do anything so what we're going to do now is we're going to make the start button start the optimization so let's go back to our form and we're going to select the start optimization button we're going to go to properties and we want to look at the event that happens when we click it so I'm just going to double click on that and uh, also while we're here just go and create an event when we double click the stop button okay so if we now go back to our code we should see some additional program that's been added for when the button one is clicked so we need to define those okay so I'm just going to get rid of the, uh, the commentary here now this is going to be using the job so we need to 
or we, we can create a variable for the job. So I'm just going to say vars and uh, again ts opt dot job and the variable name is going to be job and uh, we're going to begin. I want to clear the print log. like so and I uh, just want to print that we're starting the optimization so we know that something is happening and now what we're going to do is call the method that we just uh, we just created which defines the job so we're going to go job equals define job so we've sort of created a shopping list and now we're just uh, telling the, the program what the shopping list is but uh, the final thing we need to do is actually start the job so we're going to be using the optimization optimizer which uh, we added using the, the toolbox earlier on and I'm going to say start job and we need to tell it which job to start so we know that is just job the one that we've just created using the method and then very similarly for the other button which is the uh, the the cancel the optimization. In fact what I'm going to do is just copy the information here from the start button and uh, accept this uh, in this case I'm just going to get rid of that print log and I'm going to say cancelling optimization and uh, we don't need to define the job this time but we need to end the job so it's going to remove that press the period we're going to say cancel job and okay so there we have the, uh, the bare bones of the program and uh, what we could do now is just test and see that uh, at least the the, uh, the optimization is starting and being cancelled so let's go to trade station and I'm just gonna delete this one just so we don't uh, create confusion for ourselves gonna click on the trading apps going to go to the new program optimization 3 oh and uh, one thing that I've uh, omitted to do which uh, which is the reason we can't see a form there is that we've created the form but we've not actually done anything to show the form so what we're going to do is a once begin end statement and we just need to tell the program that we want to actually show the form so we do that by saying the name of the form which is form1 one, form1 one dot and then we want to show the form like so okay so let's try that again I'm going to verify the program and uh, there we have a form appearing so let's just go back to the the trade station screen and uh, make sure we've got it appearing there so we can see the print so if I were to start the optimization okay we see we've got a, a problem there and uh, and the issue seems to be that uh, even though we told the program that we want to use particular uh, charts or values in our program in terms of the um, the five minute the ten minute we've not actually told it how many days back to Go. so we just need to create a, an input and incidentally this we can also tell it the last date if we wish to but if you don't it will default to uh, the current date so I'm just going to say inputs and I'm uh, just going to call it days back and I'm uh, just going to say 200 in this particular case and then in the job definition and uh, we can do that under where we set up the uh, the chart lengths here we can just say security dot we want history dot days back is equal to the input that we just created days back okay so I'm going to verify this again we can see our program I'm just going to click on the uh, the trade station workspace let's try this again so start optimization so you can see we've got a text telling us that the optimization has begun we can't see anything of any use but uh, 
also stop optimization. You can see we're cancelling the optimization. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some more functionality to the program. Just going to minimize that for the moment. Okay, so one of the things that we've not done so far is used any of these events that are part of the optimizer. And we can certainly do something useful with those. So let's just uh, put in some some uh, information and you can uh, you can see how you could uh, add some things that might be useful to you in the same place. So first of all, the uh, the job done. So what we'd probably want to do is just in the print log we might want to just say print optimization complete like so. We also might be interested in some information about the job. In other words, for example, what the, the net profit is from our strategy. So we could say net profit equals, and then we need to get that information out of it. So we go args dot, and uh, we want results. And just press the period again, and you'll see there's a lot of uh, different information about we're going to be looking for net profit like so then you might want to know something about the test count so I'm just going to put test count again same formulation args dot results dot and uh, I'm going to look for get test number, like so. And then one of the uh, the really nice uh, facilities that is available to you automatically as part of the API is the ability to write a file with results. So we're going to be making use of that. You'll also see if you look at the uh, the TradeStation documentation that you can actually uh, write your own results file in a format that you wish to to use. But we're just going to be using in this particular program. Just keep it simple. We're going to be using the uh, the standard one. And uh, to use this, you have to give it a name. We're going to call it results file. and uh, we need to specify the delimiter so I'm just going to put in a comma and uh, then we need to tell it what exactly we're going to be including in the uh, the results file so we're going to go ts opt dot trade type and uh, say all trades and ts opt dot results range all okay like so so that is when the uh, the job is done but we might also be interested in some information about while the the job is actually taking place now in this particular one this is where we're going to be using the uh, the bar that shows us the progress but in the meantime before we do that we're just going to be putting some uh, print information in here so I'm going to say print test and uh, again we're going to be using args dot we want to know the the progress so let's go down progress dot and then we want to know the test number and uh, it's going to say to string like so but we might also want to know how many tests we're going to be doing so we can find that information as well so we just go args dot progress dot and then we want test count and uh, also just going to make that to string 
and uh, we might also want to know what the uh, the best value in the optimization is so far in other words the the fitness value and uh, we can do that very easily so we just say print and uh, the actual fitness name could be any number of different things you might for instance be optimizing for net profit or you might be optimizing for um, the minimum drawdown or something something of that nature so uh, in this particular case it's going to default to net profit but we need to uh, we we can display that so best values dot then fitness name like so and uh, then let's just put in the actual value of that so args dot best value dot fitness value so that we can display it okay so I think that is what we're going to do at this particular point so let's just verify this and uh, we can see if we made any errors there and one thing we haven't done so far is defined what results file is so what we'll do we can create this as an input and I'm just going to put something on my C drive so we need to make sure that we get the correct so I'm going to call it C colon backslash and I'm just going to call it optimization dot C S V and uh, in a moment we'll go into Excel and open the file just to uh, to see what we're getting from the right file capability okay so let's verify that again see if we do any better okay and uh, looks like we're good to go so what I'm going to do is start the optimization and uh, what you'll see now is we're getting an output of the test number the total number of tests and also the the net profit so far as we go through the optimization and uh, you could leave the program at this point but we're going to make a few small adjustments to it what I want to do is just uh, get this to the point where it's finished this optimization then I'll just show you the optimization file okay so the optimization is complete let's go and I'm just going to open the file in Excel okay so here you can see the uh, the values in Excel and you'll notice that if we look at the interval you'll see various intervals being used and you'll see the the various uh, the net profit etc uh, in as sorted information And if we just scroll down, and uh, you may not be able to see to the bottom of this, let me just, uh, okay, and then we just go down to check out the results. And you'll see that we've got actually 250 results. And as you recall, that's how many we asked the, uh, the program to find for us. Okay, so that's a very simple uh, optimization uh, app that you could create. What I'm gonna do now is, is because this video is getting a little long I'm going to continue in uh, videos two and three and uh, do some more things such as creating the uh, the progress bar and making the uh, the little input button useful so anyway I hope you found this uh, this video useful so far